My next short update takes me back to something I have done over the last year, and that's to talk about the behavior of the new pope. He's not so new now, Pope Francis, but he continues to do remarkable things. And I want to talk about two of them that have economic impacts. The first has to do with a conference held in Rome by the Confederation of Trade Unions in Italy. It is the major trade union organization. It's already interesting that the Pope addresses them. But I want to read to you a few of the sentences that come directly from that speech, uh, which I read with enormous interest. He says, for example, We must also think of a healthy culture of idleness, of knowing how to rest. This is not laziness. It is a human need. When I ask a man or woman with two or three children, tell me, do you play with your children? Do you allow yourself this quote-unquote idleness? Well, you know, when I go to work, they are still asleep, and when I return, they are already in bed. When a worker says that, according to Pope Francis, this is inhuman. Along with work, there must also be other culture, because a person is not only formed by labor, because we do not always work, and we must not work always. A good job is one that gives you time to be a human being, says the Pope. And when the right to a fair pension is not always recognized, and not to all, then it is bad. A pension that is fair is neither too poor nor too rich. Golden pensions are no less an offense to labor than pensions that are too low. Wow, the Pope is against too much as well as too little. I wonder how Roman Catholics in the United States are going to think about what their Pope is telling them. Let me go on with some of the other things he says. We believe the unions are prophetic. That's the word he uses. The union risks losing its prophetic nature and becoming too similar to the institutions and powers that it should instead criticize. The union, with the passing of time, has ended up resembling politics, or rather political parties, their language, their style. And instead, if this typical and diverse dimension is lacking, its action within businesses will lose strength and effectiveness. The union's movement has its great seasons when it is prophecy, when it helps not only to unmask the powerful who trample the rights of the most vulnerable workers, but who also defend the foreigner, the least, the discarded. Pope Francis is urging the unions to represent not only their members, but especially those who don't have work, who are discriminated against, who are the outsiders. The union has to bring change. It's like a watchman who guards and protects those who are inside the city of labor, but also guarding and protecting those who are outside the walls. It is not enough to protect only your members. The capitalism of our time does not understand the value of the trade union because it has forgotten the social nature of the economy, of the business. This is one of the greatest sins. Pope Francis is really clear, and his support for the union as a central part of a good society ought to make people sit up and think about what he's saying. 